Let's get it. Mike Semper Vivi here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in iHeart American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com, over the air affiliates like KMAV 99 KMSR and the Mightier 1090. Maybe you're listening to me via podcast or replay on Sirius XM, or maybe you're video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining me today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside. And if not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. It's sunny here today on my portion of Delmarva, pushing 70 degrees right now. I'm going outside immediately after this show is over. Actually, that's not true. Immediately after the show is over, I'm going to wait for the file. I'm going to upload that to the site, and then I'm going outside. So you hear about all those people on their podcast talking about find me outside, catch me outside. I'll be outside. Don't show up at my house, though. I'll shoot you. I don't know jujitsu. I don't want to know jujitsu. Stay away from me, especially if you have a creepy Vince McMahon-style mustache. And I was going to begin the show by saying I'm happy I won't have to speak too much about it today because the whole Vince story that is going to be the big shadow that hangs over pro wrestling for at least the immediate future, there was not a whole lot of news until right before I got on the air. And this is not confirmed, but it is very possible that Slim Jim is has notified WWE. This is the word that is apparently going around the locker room. There's a lot of rumor about this now online. Slim Jim has notified WWE that they are pulling their sponsorships from tomorrow's Royal Rumble due to the allegations against Vince McMahon. I'll check on this during the break and find out if anything has been made official. And we'll get into the rest of the news on what is a very busy weekend in the world of professional wrestling. It's Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Sepervivi here with you. You know we do this show right here for an hour at a time, but if you want us 24-7, you can find me at Sempervivi on Twitter slash X. The timeline for this show is at WONF4W and the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. I won't bring up Brian Alvarez or Filthy Tom Lawler's Twitters because they're not here. I don't know where they are. But I'm pretty sure that Jim Valley is going to be here with you tomorrow, live every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. And Andrew Zarian will be here on Sunday starting at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'd also like for you to make the wrestling news part of your day. Everything you need to know to get your day started, get you up to date, or get you to your favorite wrestling review pod like wrestling observer radio with dave and brian which should have a new episode following saturday's royal rumble but each episode of the wrestling news is between 5 and 15 minutes long 365 days a year 366 if there is a leap year no clickbait no speculation or rumors just the wrestling news you can find that wherever you find your favorite podcast or head on over to the wrestlingnews.com and at wrestling news av on facebook and twitter I also got a submission into the ending on Botchamania, which is, I believe, the third time that's happened. Maybe second, I don't know. And that's not a botch, I'm just burnt at this point to a crisp. I hope you like The Wire, and if you do, Okada's coming. You should enjoy that. I hope you enjoy that. It's actually a little longer uh, than what you're going to see on, on Botchamania, and that is because... New Japan is so copyright strike happy. And how copyright strike happy are they? About two weeks ago or so, they DMCA'd their own YouTube page. That happened. So being concerned about that, the Botchamania one, a little bit shorter. But I'll put it up on my Twitter page, at Sempervivi, until it gets taken down there as well. So... There's that. I still have not found out anything else new on the Slim Jim deal as the show goes on. I'll keep my eyes posted and, and check and see if any news has been reported on that. I would figure by the end of the quote-unquote business day, 5 p.m. Eastern time, we should have an answer on this. Again, 
Keep your eyes posted to at WONF4W. That is the website's Twitter page, or just go to the website, WrestlingObserver.com. There is a new edition of the Wrestling Observer newsletter up there for subscribers, as well as a ton of shows and other stuff as well. So just hang out, refresh that page, and, and we'll see what happens as we get closer to the Royal Rumble. TKO Group Holdings the parent company of WWE. And look, I, I know there are, most of you know what's going on, but there are a few of you out there, and I mean a few, that Wrestling Observer Live is your entire lifeblood to the wrestling business. A lot of you are overseas listening to us on uh, American Forces Radio, or you're, you're part of our syndication package and listening to us over the air, but... Since we last talked to you, other than what I mentioned about the possibility of Slim Jim pulling out, which is a, a recent happening today, there's only really been two notable things about the Vince McMahon story since we last spoke. And that is TKO Group Holdings, late yesterday, issuing a statement uh about the whole deal with Janelle Grant, the former WWE employee that is alleging that she was the victim of physical and emotional abuse, sexual assault, and trafficking at WWE uh, in a lawsuit that names McMahon, WWE, and John Laurinaitis as defendants. Um, since we last spoke, a TKO spokesperson issued the following statement to Variety, which responds to Grant's allegations, quote, Mr. McMahon does not control TKO, nor does he oversee the day-to-day -day operations of WWE. While this matter predates our TKO executive team's tenure at the company, we take Ms. Grant's horrific allegations very seriously and are addressing this matter internally, end quote. McMahon was among the TKO representatives present at the New York Stock Exchange this Tuesday when Dwayne The Rock Johnson rang the opening bell. Nick Khan was also there. Paul Levesque was there. Several people from the board were there. Also, since we last spoke to you, a statement also released late last night from a Vince McMahon spokesperson indicates that the TKO executive chairman is going to fight these allegations. The following was released to several media outlets by McMahon's legal team. Quote, this lawsuit is replete with lies, obscene made up instances that never occurred and a vindictive distortion of the truth. He will vigorously defend himself, end quote. So that is the extent of anything new thus far. TKO Group Holdings stock closed Thursday afternoon at 87.51 a share. It is currently trading at 86.74 right now as we rapidly pull towards the close of the trading day and the trading week on the New York Stock Exchange. So uh, by the time the show is over, we'll have an idea on where that stock is closing. I doubt it's going to drop a whole lot more unless... Uh, the Slim Jim news uh, causes speculation and maybe causes, <clears throat> pardon me, a little bit of a further drop. There is actual wrestling uh, that, that WWE is, is trying to put on uh, this weekend, including live tonight from the Casilla Center in Miami, Florida. The go-home show for Saturday's Royal Rumble Added earlier today, Solo Sokoa and L.A. Knight, which is a rematch from the October 13th SmackDown, where Knight defeated Sokoa in the build-up to challenging Reigns for the Universal Roman Reigns for the Universal title. And November's Crown Jewel show, Roman Reigns is going to be defending the Universal title in a four-way on Saturday against Knight, uh, AJ Styles, and Randy Orton, I would uh, figure that this match ends in some sort of schmaz ending here, but I also would have figured that it's going to be the main event of the show. If it's not, the main event of the show will likely be Katana Chance and Caden Carter defending the WWE Women's Tag Team title against the Kabuki Warriors of Asuka and Kairi Sane with Bailey Dakota Kai and Io Sky in their corner. I'm not going to get what I want, which is the Kabuki Warriors winning those titles. No way. You saw the the vignette that was done with Caden and Katana partying it up. No, no, we're, we're going to have them hold on to the titles for a little while. And 
it will probably be something that Bailey does, which causes the Kabuki Warriors to lose. The pride of Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. Hey, a bunch of lions, I guess. Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. They will have a face-to-face -face with the final testament of Karrion Cross, the authors of Payne, Scarlet, and Paul Ellering. Carmelo Hayes and Austin Theory, they're going to try it again. Uh, a couple weeks ago, the terrible landing off the seated Spanish fly uh, by uh, Austin Theory, where the two guys clonked heads. Theory was out with uh, in the concussion protocol for a little bit. Hayes' face was busted up a little bit, but everybody ended up okay. They're going to try this thing again tonight on the show. Also announced Carlito with Cruz del Toro, Joaquin Wilde, and Zelina Vega in his corner will face off against Santos Escobar, who will have Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo in his corner. So all of this is leading into tomorrow's Royal Rumble from St. Petersburg, Florida at Tropicana Field, the home of Major League Baseball's Tampa Bay Rays. Finished the season so disappointing last year. But that doesn't matter right now. What matters is there's only four matches. And in two of those matches uh, of the 60 participants, we know 11 of them. And I know a lot of people are annoyed by that, but let, let's be honest here. If they gave you a bunch of names, right, if they, they said, hey, the Miz is in there, and this person and that person and Tozawa and Otis and Ivar and... Okay, they put like 24 people in, and they do the same on the women's side. I mean, honestly, would you really be any more interested in the Royal Rumble? I mean, honestly, would you? Probably not. If you're bitching about this now, you just ain't going to watch that show in all likelihood. But I'm going to watch that show, and I'm a little bit excited about it. I've got predictions, and I'll give them to you when we come back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Just went to the slimgym.com slash WWE, the splash page. That's still up right now. Again, I don't... We'll, we'll find out if Slim Jim is a sponsor come tomorrow. But as of now, still sponsoring the Royal Rumble. Uh, we'll see what happens going forward. We'll see what the, the fallout's going to be. It will be interesting to see who says what and what is what when it comes to advertisers and... You know, will they lose? Because I, I see in the Twitch chat, you know, a little talk about, you know, Cricket 5G is, is one of their their big sponsors. And, you know, we've seen commercials with Sheamus and Bianca Belair and Charlotte Flair and all that stuff. We'll see if anybody starts a crusade online or if, if just on their own, some of these sponsors kind of look at the situation and go, OK, you know, we'll, we'll see you in a bit here to be real about it. If those sponsors are like the sponsors for UFC, it won't really matter whatsoever because with what happened with Dana White and his wife, with Sean Strickland being Sean Strickland with, you know, a lot for a lot of different reasons that, that one may want to point out. It's not like their sponsors have departed from them. So we'll see what happens here. The stock price is where it is right now, uh, $86.74. Probably not going to vary too much from that. It got its bump about what? It was darn near $15, I believe it was, a couple days ago from where it had stagnated at because of that deal being announced with Netflix and WWE. Seems now to have dropped a little bit and settled in where it's at. It's going to be interesting to see where that stock is going forward as well, too. Again, because the only other chips that are available in play right now would be where UFC resigns. And that may be bigger for the stock. It probably is going to be bigger for the stock than anything that has happened with WWE. I think Wall Street and in general, everybody kind of feels the way they feel about WWE programming. And it didn't matter what their increase was going to be. We got that last bump because it was a lot bigger than expected and, and very flashy. But we'll see when people start to pick it apart because we've already had Dave Meltzer pick it apart a little bit. We've already had Brandon Thurston pick it apart a little bit. We've already had other people in the financial s sphere pick it apart and go, you know, this may not be as fruitful for a deal for WWE as, you know, in investors may want. It may be good because you're in front of 300 million eyeballs worldwide and you can play up all that sort of stuff, but 
for the average investor, that may not mean so much. But we'll have to see where the stock ends up going. Went off on, on too much of a, a tangent there. The Royal Rumble is going to be on the WWE Network on Peacock Saturday, uh, as I mentioned. And the U.S. title match between Logan Paul and Kevin Owens... Logan Paul talking as if he's going to be more of a full-time WWE wrestler. Could Logan Paul hold on to that title leading into WrestleMania? I think that would make sense. I think Logan Paul being on WrestleMania would make a whole lot of sense. It's just a matter of what you what you do. You can have Logan Paul and Jake Paul against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, if you so chose, if you wanted to go in that direction, take the belt off of Logan and put it on, I don't know, Rey Mysterio, put it on Santos Escobar, put it on Dragon Lee, which would then lead to a match between maybe Dragon Lee and Santos Escobar at WrestleMania. I still like that idea. I still like the idea of mask versus hair Santos against Rey Mysterio and having the U.S. title be on the line. And if Rey can't be there because he's banged up, obviously Dragon Lee would slide right into that place with Carlito being the stepping stone for Santos to get to, to either Rey or to get to Dragon Lee. In that, you know, again, and you don't need the U.S. title for that either, but, you know, a situation where it's maybe Logan, you know, again, Logan defending the title on his own against somebody would probably be good, but... Considering that he's hooked up with Kevin Owens right now, and he's he's talked about sticking around, and we usually like spectacle matches, or, you know, again, yes, we all like, they like spectacle matches, we as fans like spectacle matches sometimes during WrestleMania weekend, and that would certainly be one of them, and it would certainly get both sides a lot of attention, and we've seen the Pauls. You know, it may not be ideal if you're the biggest Kevin Owens or Sami Zayn fan in the world that they're facing off against, you know, Logan and Jake Paul, especially if you're a, a little bit of an older wrestling fan, but in the era we're in right now, I'd actually be all for that uh, that's got nothing to do with the, the the match tonight other than or tomorrow night other than i believe logan paul holds on to that title universal title roman reigns defends against aj styles la knight and randy orton in a four-way roman reigns holds on to that title it's, there's no other ending out of this it's just a matter of what happens now what's the feud going to be is it a three-way feud between styles knight and orton uh, it seems as though AJ Styles really wants to beat up LA Knight. That seems like it would make for a, a decent enough feud. You know, LA Knight doing the talking and AJ Styles, you know, kind of carrying the, the weight in the ring. Randy Orton is about a different million different directions that he could go in and about a million different people that he could work with. It's just a matter of, of placing him in there with somebody. Men's Rumble, we've got seven people announced. Shinsuke Nakamura... CM Punk, Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, Cody Rhodes, Damian Priest, and Gunther. My prediction is either The Rock or Cody Rhodes wins, because I believe we're either going to get The Rock or Cody Rhodes against Roman Reigns at night two of WrestleMania. The way things are going, it feels as though it's going to be The Rock. The whole deal, the, te the tease of the, the head of the table... It feels as though, I mean, even though this has been said before, if it's not going to be this year, when's it going to be? Of course, obviously, that throws a, a big wedge into Cody Rhodes finishing his story, but we have a whole new chapter that could be penned with CM Punk as part of that story, and I thought they did a great job on Monday. I thought they did a wonderful job with the most simplistic stuff in the whole wide world, too. It was just, you know, I went away, you went away. You know, hey, you're, you know, I'm, I'm kind of more the American dream than you. Well, I'm kind of more CM Punk than you. Oh, really? You're CM Punk? Well, let me tell you how your WrestleMania story is going to go if you're me. And they just did a good job slowly just digging in a little more to each other and building it up. I would like to see that match. I would like to see Cody Rhodes finish his story. But if we're not going to go in that direction, Cody Rhodes and CM Punk, that's a big match. And that's a big feud. And that's a big build. 
and those are two pros. And, you know, I, I, that is something that I would look forward to a lot there. So, again, I, it's either going to be Cody or The Rock. I think The Rock ends up coming in at number 29 or number 30, more likely. I know Cody did it last year for number 30. Maybe Rock can come in at number 29 or whatever, and then you could have a comedy figure be 30 or, or something like that. But, you know, you can't have Rock out there for too long because he, he will blow up pretty quick. You know, in fact, that they, there you go. Have The Rock and then Jinder Mahal come out at number 30. When it comes to the Women's Rumble, four people announced Becky Lynch, Bailey, Nia Jax, Bianca Belair. This is where it's interesting when it comes to possible, you know, fun uh, people coming in, uh, surprises, and where it comes to debuts. Do you debut Jade Cargill here? Even if you're not going to use her in something, do you have her in this match where she can be seen, have a big entrance? You don't expose her as far as her wrestling in the ring, and then she just gets tossed out late after she tosses out a couple people. You could do that. Same thing goes for like a Tiffany Stratton in that position. You know, we're probably going to have some people from the NXT roster up and, and involved in this thing. You know, who are we going to see possibly in the match? Same, and that's the same thing on the men's side, too. You know, are we going to see Carmelo Hayes in the match? Are we going to see Trick Williams be in the match or, or, or you know, somebody that they like right now? Obviously, they like Josh Briggs, a big guy. Do you put him in the Royal Rumble in a, in a position where you have like four or five other big guys in the ring just to give him a little bit ex of experience that way? Be very interesting to see what they do. I think at the end of the day... Becky Lynch is going to be the one who wins the thing and then goes on to challenge Rhea Ripley in the match for WrestleMania. And that match is probably going to be the main event of, of night one. I would do that at least. I think that is enough in a big enough match on its own that you can go ahead and do that. I'm also thinking next year, and I could be, again, you're going to have Cody Rhodes maybe possibly in Roman Reigns go at it again next year, but... Rhea Ripley against Bianca Belair, if built up correctly, that feels to me at like the only match, if you were going to try to main event the second night of WrestleMania, and I think you would have to keep them away from each other, you know, for a while on different brands, but you would have to have them kind of somehow sniping back and forth with each other, but of all of the matches that I could think of, you know, when it comes to the women main eventing the second night of WrestleMania, I think one day, and possibly next year, although again, if it's Cody and Roman, it ain't going to be, but I could see one day where, where Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair main event WrestleMania, but this year, I think Becky wins the Rumble, moves on and challenges Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. Got a bunch more to get into that's going on this weekend. We got SmackDown, we got Rampage, Collision, GCW, CMLL, and so much more. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper VB here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Because nobody else is here right now. I get a chance to plug stuff that I enjoy reading and listening to and that my friends be working at and whatnot. For Wrestling Illustrated right over here. You know, like, hey, it's pretty good. You got Tony Storm there. You know, but that's last month's issue. Where's the new one? It's right here. That's right. The Judgment Day on the cover. The XL Collector's Edition. Pro Wrestling Illustrated. How is this thing dated right now? April 2024 edition. Of, you know, so it's always been that way. It's always like two months ahead of time here. But yes, the, the WWE did a number. And again, these are coming from fans. And it's always an interesting perspective when it comes to these types of awards because it is the you know the mainstream fan which is picking up pro wrestling illustrated there's a lot of hardcores a lot of people like me that are you know hey it's it's you know like they used to lie about playboy you know you're reading it for the articles i am reading it for the articles because you know it's people like brian solomon who i work with and it's you know lots of other people harry burkett and, and, and plenty of others putting in you know great work over there but you know, when it comes to these awards, they're voted on by the fans. Shoot voted on by the fans. And 
you know, when that happens, it gives you a good idea on kind of where the, the pulse of the, the general fan is. I also noticed this on the backside. This has got to be, this has got to be a, uh, a a majors slash Zach Ryder special here. Big rubber guys, I guess made in the same vein of the LJN toys from the past. They do have a Magnum TA one there. Can we get that for Hangman Adam Page uh, to to learn about there? Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Support Pro Wrestling Illustrated. It's still a fantastic magazine. There's always a lot of cool stuff in there. I'm pissed off still about Hangman Adam Page. I will glance down at the Twitch chat as I ask this question. When it came to the face-to-face -face that happened on Wednesday on Dynamite after Swerve's match was over and he ran up on Hangman Adam Page, who was talking to Renee Paquette, what did you think about Hangman Adam Page's responses? How did you feel about him in that scenario? What did you think about how he responded to, to Swerve, the guy that... Again, violated the sanctity of the man's household and ran up in his child's room and cut a promo on his baby as he slept in a crib. How did you respond? What did you think about that? Because I thought it was incredibly, incredibly weak. And I like Hangman hey Adam Page. And I like how the look is beginning to evolve here a little bit. But honestly, honestly... He's got to, they got to work with him on that. He's got to work on this. You need to have some sort of really evil streak. And we see it with the moves. We've seen it in, you know, in the types of matches they've had, the, the barroom brawls and all that sort of stuff where it's like he can play, you know, again, there are, you know, moments of being a tough guy, but he's got to be able to bring that out when it comes to promos he's got to be able to bring that out in a believable way where he, he's not just going well you know i'm gonna go up and beat you in the ratings like are we just supposed to like retroactively forget about everything that has led to this point between those two guys like to me that that no, you should want that backstory. It should be something you're building off of here. It should be a tension point between these two guys forever. Whether they're on the same page one day or not, there needs to still always be, you know, that sort of tension there until Hangman Page, and even if Hangman Page gets his ultimate revenge on Swerve that way, I mean, still, I, I think there should be some tension there, so... I don't know what got me off on that tangent there. Sorry, because Magnum TA was always one of my favorites growing up. Another Virginia guy. He wasn't down there. Uh, the page is more from the central southern part of the state. Magnum TA was from the Tidewater region uh, from Norfolk there. So, you know, again, that's what they're kind of trying to build to. And I think that's a really good idea. But I was thinking about it before the show again. Just, you know, how much that really annoyed me there. But... You know, that's got really nothing to do with anything when it comes to tonight's Rampage, which was taped on Wednesday night, also from the N Market Arena in Savannah, Georgia, and they did not have a big crowd there. And the reason I'm going to mention this is because I'll take a sidebar here. The, this was posted up uh, to the front page earlier on today by Joseph Courier. WWE is bringing a NXT premium live event to that same building in Savannah, Georgia in May. Battleground 2024 will take place at the N Market Arena on Sunday, May 26, and air live on Peacock slash the WWE Network. Battleground is the first of back-to-back -back nights at Enmark Arena for WWE. The Monday, May 27th episode of Raw is also being held at the venue. Combo tickets for the show are going on sale at 10 a.m., next friday so the individual tickets will go on sale at a later date it is going to be nxt's third ple of 2024 vengeance day is going to be held on february 4th while stand and deliver will take place on wrestlemania weekend on saturday april 6th so back to that Enmark arena uh from wednesday night with matches that were taped for tonight this is according to the official preview, so no spoilers. They are saying it is a quartet of top-shelf battles. I'll let you decide on that. The Butcher 
Ijo del Vikingo and Commander, along with Kip Sabian, in a four-way to determine Saturday's challenger for the AEW International Championship held by Orange Cassidy. John Moxley faces off against Lee Moriarty. Lee Moriarty could use this match because you remember when him and Daniel Garcia and Wheeler Yuta, it was like, okay, these guys are kind of our young guys that we are anointing right now. You know, we, we Darby Allen's over jungle boy is, is jungle boy. And Sammy Guevara, we have ups and downs with him. Like those were like, you know, of the, the four pillars, there were, were three there. Well, you move ahead a little bit, and there's Daniel Garcia, Wheeler Yuta, and Lee Moriarty. And Daniel Garcia goes over to the Jericho Appreciation Society. Wheeler Yuta becomes a member of the Blackpool Combat Club. And Lee Moriarty became a member of the firm. And then just kind of faded away. And then got picked up again here by Shane Taylor Promotions. And he was mean mugging John Moxley a lot. Uh, on on Wednesday, when when he defeated Shane Taylor, was it Wednesday, Saturday? I can't remember when it was, but John Moxley defeated Shane Taylor. Lee Moriarty was giving him the eyeball, and they'll be wrestling tonight. Anna Jay against Ruby Soho. If you've been following this story, um, I, I'm sure you're going to be entertained. Uh, Ruby Soho uh, being manipulated right now uh, by by Soraya. And her relationship with, with, with uh, I can't even remember the girl's name. What's the girl's name from from QTV? Uh, Mariah May's old partner. What's what's her, what's her name? Somebody in the chat, help me out here. I'm having a, an old man moment. Harley, thank you, Harley Quinn DJ. Thank you for for saving me there. Harley Quinn uh, is being used by Soraya to be a a thorn in the side of Ruby Soho and her relationship with Angelo Parker. It's just been a big old soap opera. Well, that continues on tonight. Long story short. And then the main event of the show, at least what I assume is going to be the main event of the show, Christopher Daniels against Kanosuke Takeshita. And I know Christopher Daniels is a little bit older, but I have a feeling that knowing these two, from what I've seen of these two, it should be pretty good. AEW Collision Saturday night on TNT from Bozier City, Dax Harawood. Bozier City, Louisiana, not Boise, Idaho, okay? Bozier City, whatever. At the Brookshire Grocery Arena, Serena Deeb will face off against somebody. We saw a video package from her this past Wednesday night saying that she is on the comeback trail and she is ready for action. She will have a match. Lady Frost will face Mariah May. Brian Danielson against Yuji Nakata in a match that was... I guess made for me, to be honest with you. Orange Cassidy uh, will defend the AEW International title against whoever wins the four-way on Rampage. Uh, Roderick Strong has got a title match coming up on March 3rd in Greensboro at AEW Revolution. It'll be interesting to see if that ends up being a one-on-one -on -one match or they end up inserting a, a third person into that mix. You know, I saw in the chat a little bit earlier on, too, that, you know, there's the possibility of doing a three-way between Cody, The Rock, and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I hate that idea. Either give me a singles match or don't give me anything when it comes to that because I don't know what you're you're pulling off there. If you defeat two Samoans, then it's sort of like Dusty defeating Afa and Sika at the Garden back in the day. I don't know. Why would you do this? I just It doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, there's another match taking place on Saturday as well. Six-man tag team escape the cage elimination match. Daniel Garcia and FTR against the House of Black. So that is that. Wednesday's night and Wednesday night's episode of AEW Dynamite averaged 837,000 viewers on TBS, down 6% from last week, drew a 0 0.27 in the 18 to 49 demo, down a lot more than than 6% three times more, in fact, 18% from the week previous and is the second lowest rating the show has done since December 20th. So it's just seemingly always going to be between 825,000 and 875,000 until otherwise noted. Uh, I don't think it really matters whatsoever. Hey, did, did you miss Thursday's uh, TNA Impact show? 
Well, don't worry. If you have Access TV, you'll be able to check it out again tonight. They are re-airing the show at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. The company announced the news earlier on today, but did not clarify what caused the transmission issues. The show, and you know, to be honest with you, I don't know if there were issues with the show or not because I don't have Access TV. But like, even if there weren't any issues with Access, I would say that there were. Because when are you going to have Kazuchika Okada back? And when are you going to be able to say you got the in-ring debut of the former Dolph Ziggler? And a lot of people might, you know, kind of blow both of those things off here a little bit. But if you're Impact, you spent some money here. You've done a lot of rebranding. And you want as many people uh, in their eyeballs to be on your product as possible. So uh, the show did, as I mentioned, feature the in-ring debut of Nick Nemeth. And Okada's return to the company for the first time since 2011. 11, plus a knockouts title match between Jordan Grace and Trinity. What it also featured as it went off the air was a video that teased Mustafa Ali uh, coming to TNA. And then on social media today, Ali posted his upcoming schedule of appearances, which revealed that he will be at all six shows that TNA has coming up across three different weekends in February and March, including the No Surrender and Sacrifice TNA Plus specials. Uh, the rest are going to be television tapings, so he is going to be on TV for TNA Impact at least through April with how everything lays out there. There's also a bit of news today that Explosion is going to be coming back. The former TNA syndicated show will come back as a Friday TNA Plus exclusive uh, on their TNA Plus channel. Uh, actually, it's not going to be exclusive there. It's going to begin. It's going to debut every Friday on TNA Plus for their subscribers and then is going to be posted up to YouTube on Tuesdays. So each week's show will feature two new matches and promotional segments with Gia Miller. The debut that launched today features Rhino against uh, Mahabali Shira and Joe Hendry against Rich Swan. So we'll go ahead and put a bow on this show when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Oh my Semper Vivi, Wrestling Observer Live, West Side Gun with Julia Lang, right there. GCW's got two shows this weekend. They do indeed. The Egypt Shrine Center in Tampa, Florida, for GCW, look at me. I don't know where to put the inflection on that. I don't know if it's, you know, look at me. Or if it's, you know, look at me! I don't I don't know exactly where, you know, what the vibe is exactly for this show, but uh, Blake Christian, who you may see, uh, lose a lot of matches in ROH. I, I still don't like this deal with him over there, just, you know, putzing around there a little bit. He's the GCW World Champion. He'll be facing off against Sawyer Rack. This is his 31st title defense. I don't know if at, at any point... Nick Gage had more, but this is a long, long reign, and he has beaten a lot of guys, especially of name value. Tony Deppen will face Mansoor, Joey Janela against AJ Francis. Oh, yeah, you know Janela's going to do some sort of spot where he dives outside the ring and doesn't quite make it. It's just a matter of, will AJ Francis do that? Leo Rush against Jack Cartwheel in a match in which... Uh, it's going to be incredible. There's going to be a match where geometry may be involved with those two going at each other. And then Effie against Mance Warner in a, a battle of second gear crew members. Just, uh, you know, I'm sure Manders is going to be in the corner of Mance Warner. Obviously, Effie's bussy partner, Ali Catch, will be in, in his corner. He's got the big gay brunch going on. Effie does on Saturday as well, too. That's taking place at noon, also at the Egypt Shrine Center in Tampa. The biggest thing there is his team with Alley Catch facing off against the return of the maximum male models for one day. Mansoor and Mace Madden, MXM. They can't do M&M because I believe WWE would still have the trademark on that. I don't know done with this week done with it shall talk to you all again after a while